My name is Kirsty Moline, and I'm the webmaster here at St. Thomas of Beckett, and I'm so grateful to you for joining us tonight for Stations of the Cross. I just wanted to tell you a few things that will be different about this stations and where this stations was inspired. So uh, my mom, who would hate that anyone knew this, uh, my mom has had a number of difficulties over the years, but in particular in the last year she's lost a lot of her vision. And it has caused me to look at the world in an entirely different way. And she's also lost a lot of mobility. She's in a wheelchair primarily now. And so it's, it's caused me to look at walking in a completely different way. So this Stations of the Cross, you will spend the entire station seated. Um, and part of that is to be in solidarity with people who cannot stand for long periods of time or who find it uncomfortable to stand for long periods of time. I will also be visually describing each station and we'll have the stations, which are our actual Stations of the Cross from St. Thomas of Beckett, uh, put up here on the big screen and I'll be describing what's going on in each station. That way, if someone couldn't see, they would have a feel for what's going on and could be inspired by their own mental picture of that station. And we will, another uh, deviation from tradition is that we're going to be introducing elements of silence. So in a traditional Stations of the Cross, we sing after every station. In this uh, Stations of the Cross, there will be, uh, we'll be singing after every fourth station and then as well at the end. And the pockets of silence are intentional. Again, it's to make us aware of people who can't hear, of what their world sounds like, that if you were deaf or profoundly hard of hearing, that you would live in a world that has silence. It's also intentional because we live in a world with a lot of noise. And we are often really uncomfortable with silence to the point that we put on our TVs to have background noise or radios to have background music. And there isn't a lot of time where we just sit in silence with the Lord. So I invite you to take the, that time between stations. It won't be very long, but it will feel long. Because silence, if you're not used to it, can feel a little uncomfortable. And uh, finally, I invite you to uh, really take the time afterwards or at some time during Lent. I wrote the Stations of the Cross, and I wrote it with my mom in mind. And so I've practiced it several times. I haven't been able to get through it one time without crying. So I'm hopeful this, this is the time. But I, it's very personal to me. And if you ever pray the Stations of the Cross and think about what was going on with Jesus at that time and what's going on in your own life that mirrors that or has mirrored that. It can be a profoundly moving experience. So we will get started. I believe this song is a little bit new to most of you. So let's begin first in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we are about to walk your last walk. We are about to walk your way. Please help us to center our hearts, to quiet our minds, to still our spirits, so that we can be one in you. Lord, let me walk that lonely road with you under the weight of the wood lord let me walk that last mile in your shoes under the weight of the wood freedom can be found The first station, Jesus is condemned to die. My beautiful daughter, Aaliyah, will be taking our crucifix to march to each station on all of our behalf.
The first station, Jesus is condemned to die. In the first station, a bearded Jesus stands before Pilate. He is wearing a simple white long sleeve tunic and a red cloak around his shoulder. His brown hair stands at shoulder length. His head does not yet hold the crown of thorns. Pilate is seated in a chair with carved arms. He is holding a rolled paper. From his seated position, he looks up at Jesus. There is a small pole between Jesus and Pilate with a sign that reads S-P-Q-R. This stands for Senatus Populus K. Romanus, the Roman Senate and people. Jesus' trial is a sham. Pilate can find no wrong that Jesus has committed. He asks, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests reply, We have no king but Caesar. In the end, Pilate hands Jesus over to be crucified. We want to cry, It isn't fair when Jesus is condemned to die. Jesus, make us strong like you when we have to confront life's unfairness. Strengthen us when we are called to stand up and confront injustice. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. Jesus is receiving a large wooden cross from a man in a blue tunic, a mustard yellow shirt, and a red cap. The cross is larger than Jesus. Jesus' head is encircled with the crown of thorns. A drop of blood drips down the right side of Jesus' face. His feet are bare. Think about the heavy cross that Jesus has to carry. Imagine the long road he must take, so much of it uphill. How very, very much Jesus must love us to suffer so much for us. We, too, have crosses to bear. Worries, illnesses, problems, losses. Jesus, by your cross, you give us strength to face each day. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. The weight of the heavy wooden cross has brought Jesus to his knees. His right knee touches the ground. His right hand is on his knee as if to support the weight of the cross. His left hand holds the cross. There are two men in the background. One is a bearded man holding a wood, wearing a blue cloak with a white hooded mantle. He holds a scroll in his right hand, and his left hand is raised. He is looking at the second man, who is holding the top of Jesus' cross. The second man wears a red tunic and a cap. Neither man looks at Jesus below them. Jesus has been badly beaten, and his strength wanes. He falls to his knees under the great weight of the cross. Jesus... You experienced pain and suffering. When we falter or fall or lose faith, help us to remember that you understand and give us the strength to get back up and start anew. The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. Jesus is on his feet. There are three people in the station. A man on the left is wearing a green tunic and a white cap. He has a hand on Jesus' right shoulder, but he does not look at Jesus. Jesus is in the center of the station. He is holding the heavy cross with his left hand and bearing the weight of the cross on his left shoulder. He reaches out his right hand toward his mother. Mary wears a red floor-length dress with long sleeves, a blue cape and a white veil. Mary touches her son's chest with her right hand and reaches for him with her left. She gazes straight into his eyes. Imagine how Mary must have suffered watching her beloved child being tortured and led away to death. 
Though she has faith in God's plan, her heart is broken. We, too, know how painful it is to watch others suffer, especially those we hold most dear. Mary, Mother of God, help us to find strength when our faith is shattered. Lord, let me cool your lips baked like clay under the weight of the wood dried up like rain on a hot dusty day under the weight of the wood freedom can be found The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. Simon has picked up the cross of Jesus. Simon is in front of Jesus bearing the full weight of the cross over his left shoulder. Simon is dressed in a blue tunic with a red bag slung across his body. He wears a cap and knee-high boots as if, as if he has been walking. Jesus stands just behind Simon with his left hand on Simon's right shoulder, both men look into the distance. Simon does not volunteer to carry Jesus' cross. The soldiers force him to help. Are we strong enough to take up the cross of Jesus? Are we strong enough to accept the help of others who must carry our cross? We carry so many crosses. It is easier for us to imagine being Simon, someone who must help, than to be Jesus, who needs help. Loving God, give us your grace to take up the crosses of others with joy. Give us the grace to accept the help of others with equal joy. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Jesus has stopped. He is carrying the full weight of the cross again. The heavy cross is resting on his left shoulder. Veronica stands in front of him. She wears a purple full-length dress with long sleeves. She holds out a cloth to Jesus. Jesus reaches for the cloth with his right hand. He has left an imprint of his face on Veronica's cloth. Our Lord's face is covered with sweat and dirt and blood. The holy woman Veronica uses her veil to wipe the face of Jesus, to do her part to lessen his suffering. Veronica did not have the power to stop Jesus' suffering and death, but she did not despair. Instead, she does what she can to show Jesus her love and to help him on his journey. Lord, Inspire in us the compassion and grace of Veronica. When we have no fixes or cures, help us to be present to the suffering of others, to wipe their brow, or to find some small way to make a difference. the seventh station. Jesus falls for the second time. Jesus is again brought to his knees by the great weight of the cross. This time, his knee bends even lower. He has fallen on his left knee. 
His right hand catches a rock as he falls. A Roman centurion dressed in a blue tunic and overskirt, epaulets and a centurion's helmet, grabs the rope belt around Jesus' waist. The Roman grips the cross with his left hand. Weary and suffering, Jesus falls again. It must have been so painful for him as he fell to the ground. Think of those who suffer from addiction, from serious mental or physical illnesses. Think of their families. Each fall is torture. Lord, give us compassion to be your face in the world, even in the face of repeated disappointments and crushing blows. If we have fallen, give us your strength to get up and continue our journey. The eighth station, Jesus meets the crying women. Jesus is back on his feet and holding his cross with both hands. There are two women facing him. One is kneeling in a long-sleeved yellow dress. She has her hands folded in prayer and is looking directly up at Jesus. The other woman is standing slightly behind the first. She wears a long red-sleeved dress with a dark veil around her head and across her body. She holds her right hand to her face in lamentation. By now, the sight of Jesus is unbearably sad. The women stand crying, a witness to the pain and suffering of Jesus. Jesus says, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and your children. He knows that terrible times are coming. He stands in solidarity with those who suffer. Jesus, help us to understand that you know our suffering. You suffer with us and encircle us with your love and grace always. They gave you gall and sour wine for your food. Under the weight of the wood Father, forgive them They don't know what they do Under the weight of the wood Freedom can be found Laden down Under The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. This is Jesus' third fall, and he falls even harder. He is almost completely prostrate on the ground, propping himself on his left elbow. His head has dropped below his shoulders. He is in agony. The cross lays completely across his back. There is a Roman in a red tunic and helmet pulling a rope around Jesus' waist. The Roman grips the cross with his left hand. Again, Jesus falls. He is exhausted. His agony overwhelms him. What a great love he has for us to endure this. To be human is to suffer. Help us to see Jesus' face in the face of all who suffer. Jesus, please give us strength to persevere when we suffer. Help us to see your face in the faces of every man, woman, and child, every animal that suffers. Strengthen us to act like you taught us, with love and compassion.
the tenth station. The soldiers take Jesus' clothes. Jesus stands between two men. A man in a green tunic on Jesus' right pulls away the tunic from his right shoulder. A man with a red leather tank and a dark skirt pulls away the tunic from Jesus' left shoulder. Jesus' cloak is pulled away from his body down to his stomach. We see his chest. Jesus stands tall and straight. His shoulders are not hunched. He does not look at either man, but looks straight ahead into the distance and up to his father. Jesus is stripped of his clothes roughly and with no compassion. The soldiers try to strip his dignity, but they cannot take away his glory or his love for us. Jesus shows us dignity, even in the face of death. Help us to treat all with dignity and respect, especially those with whom Jesus spent his life, the outcast, the marginalized, the children, the elderly, the physically or mentally ill. Give us the strength to act with dignity when we suffer. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. The cross is lying flat on the ground. Jesus is laying on the cross. His tunic has been completely removed, and he is wrapped in a simple cloth around his waist. His legs are slightly bent. They have not yet been nailed to the cross. His right arm is outstretched on the crossbar. Two men in short-sleeved tunics are nailing Jesus to the cross. One holds a very large hammer. The other pushes with both hands to hold Jesus' right arm to the wood. Blood is pooling from Jesus' right hand. Jesus' left hand is free and resting on the ground a short distance from his body. The thorns on Jesus' head are causing him to bleed more and more. Behold, Jesus his arms outstretched, lying on the cross as they hammer nails into his hands and feet. The soldiers will lift the cross and we will see him, arms outstretched, enfolding us in his love. Help us to feel how very much he loved us then, how much he loves us now, and how much he will always, always love us. He did this for us. Jesus, you were nailed to the cross. Your arms were immobilized. Help us to be your arms here on earth. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. The cross stands high with Jesus nailed to it. There is blood spilling from the holes through his hands. His feet are crossed together. A nail has been driven through them. There is a wound in his side. His head is leaning to the right. Two people stand beneath the cross, Mary, his mother, and John, his beloved disciple. Mary is wearing the same long red tunic with blue mantle and veil. She has buried her face in her hands. John is wearing a long-sleeved green tunic with a red cape. His hands are clasped in prayer, and he gazes up at the face of Jesus. After hours of suffering, Jesus cries out to his father, and he dies. Picture that moment. The world is dark. The earth 
trembles. We are afraid. We feel so lost and alone. Nothing has turned out the way we planned. Though few of us have ever had to endure the torture Jesus did, we all know loss and pain. We know moments when it does not seem possible that we will ever recover. Nothing has turned out the way we planned. In the moments of our darkest hours, help us to remember you, Lord. Help us to know you are there, that you will always be there, and that you understand our suffering. Lord, must the journey always end this way under the weight of the wood? How many times have we nailed you up today under the weight of the wood? Freedom can be laden down under the weight of the wood. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. The cross stands in the background draped with a white cloth over each end of the crossbar. Mary is holding her son in her lap. She supports Jesus with her right hand. Her left hand hand clasps his left hand. She is looking tenderly at her child laying across her knees. John stands just behind Mary. He has his hand on her right shoulder. His left hand is at his chest. He gazes at the scene before him. Mary is waiting at the foot of the cross to hold her son in her arms again. She holds him close to her, just as she did when he was an infant in the stable. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, Salome, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, watch from a distance. They will go to Mary. They will help her family to get through this one moment, one meal, one step at a time. Mary, you bore witness to the life of your son from his first steps to his last. Strengthen us when we must bear witness to the suffering of those we love. Inspire us to be a community of faith that responds to suffering like the women of Galilee did. The fourteenth station. Jesus is buried in the tomb. Jesus is partially shrouded, but the shroud does not cover his head or his right arm. His head is bent. His chest bears the bloody wound. His right arm bears the blood from the piercing of the nails. He is being placed into a rectangular stone tomb by two men. One is Joseph of Arimathea, who is wearing an orange long-sleeved tunic and a blue hooded cape. Joseph has a full beard and is supporting Jesus under each arm. The other man looks much younger. He's wearing a green long-sleeved tunic. He assists Joseph in burying Jesus and supports Jesus' legs as Jesus is laid into the tomb. There is a closed wooden door behind them, ringed with rough stones. Joseph of Arimathea, a righteous Jew and follower of Jesus, quietly arranges for Jesus' burial. He wraps Jesus' body in fine linen and lays it in the tomb. The women of Galilee anoint Jesus' body with spices and oils. Perhaps they used frankincense and myrrh, 
gifts like the one that Mary and Joseph received at Jesus' birth. Jesus, from birth you were called to suffer on the cross. You had free will. You could have said no, but you did not. Your love for us was so great. O oh Lord, help us to do righteous works quietly and with no fanfare like Joseph of Arimathea. Help us to find the Josephs of the world, the Johns, the Mary Magdalens, the Salomes, the Veronicas, the people who stand with you and who are not afraid to do your work. Let us live and work in solidarity with them. Jesus, help us to recognize that the best way that we can honor your death is to model your life. Lord, let me walk that lonely road with you under the weight of the wood. Lord, let me walk that last mile in your shoes under the weight of the wood. Freedom can be found laden down under the weight of the wood. We're going to close our Stations of the Cross tonight by making one of the simplest prayers and one of the first that we teach to our children. As Aaliyah brings the cross to the center, let us make the sign of the cross and remember what that cross means to us and to our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>